Okay, so today we're going to be doing axle bearings. And I want to go over everything that you're going to need. And as far as how much money you're going to have to spend, you're going to have parts, which is probably going to be around, if you, depending on where you get them from, it could be like 20 to to $100 just for parts. And then if you want, and then to do the special tools, at least for this job anyway, you're going to have to have a bearing seal and race driver set and a barrel axle bearing remover set. So, um, if you want to stand yeah. over here and look at these. So this is everything that you need here. Now this part, I suppose is optional. I like gaskets. So I always try to use gaskets anywhere that I can use a gasket because I don't know, I, I think that they're better than just using silicone. I don't like getting silicone inside of things. Uh, you're gonna need axle seals because you're gonna have to take those out and this is just insurance anyway. I, would, I, I don't recommend replacing bearings without replacing the seals. So you're gonna need the axle seals and then you're gonna need the bearings themselves. I have centric bearings. Uh, these should be quality bearings. I got all this stuff off Rock Auto, but um, and then this is it. This is basically what you're replacing right here. And then you want to make sure that it turns. Oh, and this one's actually becomes pre-lubed. How cool is that? So a lot of times you want to kind of grease these, but this one actually comes pre-greased. Uh, these don't look like both sides look the same I don't see a difference so I'm assuming you can install these either way but I'm gonna install the part number outwards so that you know in the future whenever I go to replace these if I can't remember if they need a part number I can look right here and I don't have to worry about actually yanking it out first you know that way I can still be able to put the vehicle back together and drive it if I need to something that I'm gonna do doing this the main reason I'm doing this is because on my last truck my axles actually broke uh, and that's what caused me to wreck my white truck so I want to pull these out, replace these bearings, and do an axle check. If I end up needing new axles, I'll get those on order as soon as I can so that I can have this thing back together. So, uh, you're going to need a torque wrench. And just a, if you're doing it on a 95, you need a 3 8 ratchet with an extension and a 13 millimeter. That's going to be for your diff cover bolt. And then you're going to need two quarts, or I think it is two quarts, of, uh, of gear dope. If you have a limited slip differential, you're going to need limited slip additives. Um, and whatever oil that takes. I don't know this one's an open diff so I don't have to worry about it. At least that's what the tag says. If it ends up being different I'm going to have to go back to the parts store but we'll know whenever we get in there. Um, and then you'll need a torque wrench to torque everything to specifications. So I'm going to show you the special tools and what they look like first. So this is a seal bearing and race driver set. If you do a lot of seals and stuff you'll know what this looks like. And this is going to come in handy not only for the bearings but also for the seals because you want to find one that will these are literally out of order. I bought that. So I don't I didn't buy these tools. I went and rented them. This was $123 for rental. So you'll at least so you'll so you'll at least need that that much money uh, to go rent them. So and this is what is happening? Who put these back in here? Probably the last guy who rented it. I'm pretty sure that I just redundantly I think it was right the first time <laughs> anyway so you want one that sits over it kind of like that but it's not bigger than the board that one is a little bit bigger than what the board would be so maybe we want to go down a size and that one's probably good right there you can see that it is actually not bigger than the bearing it is a little bit smaller than the bearing and that's what you want so you want the same thing for the seal a lot of, uh, there are some, which I'm not going to pull these out of the package so I'm exactly ready to install them, but you want the same thing. And generally speaking, if it fits the bearing, it fits the seal. So, and uh, I'll show you how to install the bearings whenever we get to there. But yeah, this is everything you're going to need to do them. You're going to need this. So that is, now this is to install them. So I know I kind of went backwards, but that would, this is the tool to install them. This is the main thing that would be kind of expensive. This one was actually more expensive than this one. But anyway, this is the remover tool. And I hope there's one big enough. If there's not, I'm going to have to go back and I'm not going to be very happy. Uh, well, actually, you can check. Because the way that this works is, I don't know if I'll be able to show this on the vehicle, so I'm going to show it now. Because it goes in here like this. Back this nut up. So the way that this works is it goes in here like this and then clicks on the back side of it. And then you tighten this nut up. So, but that's the basic gist of how it works. It goes in behind the bearing and you pull it out. So, that's the basic idea anyway. 
And I'm not even sure that this one's the right size. This one may be too actually too big. Um, but anywho, so that's how that bearing works, or that's how that tool works. That's how both of the tools work, and that one goes in there and drives it in. So we're gonna go over there. We're gonna pull the cover. We're gonna drain the diff fluid, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I like to break them all loose before I do anything. As you can see, I broke that one. I started kind of seeping a little bit of fluid. Um, but go ahead and break them all loose. I leave these two in right here and take the rest of them out. So I broke them all loose with a ratchet. Now I can use an impact to take them the rest of the hey, way out. Uh, maybe you should move the bucket so no more dirt falls into it. Well, I was about to explain that. And thank you for reminding me. So I don't care about this fluid. This fluid I'm throwing in the trash. So it doesn't matter what falls in this bucket. I'm going to dump all this into a recycler and it doesn't matter but you can go ahead and take all your bolts out and get you a magnetic tray all right they cost like 10 bucks and you can throw them on the ground and uh you know it'll keep all your bolts good you know. and as you can see this actually was probably an rtv gasket um and sometimes i come from the factory with them but I did buy a gasket for this. It's a 10 bolt. So, apparently there's different sizes. And I took a picture of this bolt before I took it off so that I'd know where this one is. So, keep that bolt with that. And then you're going to want to back these up. Not all the way though. And then... It can be a little messy, but get your gasket scraper or whatever you may be using. Do it that hammer. Here it is. I know my hammer's not exactly professional, but it's the one I got. <laughs> ah! That was beautiful, as you can see, and I didn't get any on me at all. See, I'm, I'm, I can tell. That, that was very clean. <laughs> it smells so bad. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh. Okay, so Victor's gonna stop recording and go grab us some uh, some rags. That's what Victor's gonna do. So I don't see any reason to make a montage of me cleaning this fluid or this uh, gasket surface. So I'm going to take my gasket scrapers and like I said this one's actually a putty knife. These work really good for getting off gasket material. Um, also with this being steel I probably will take a, a wire wheel and lightly go over the whole thing uh, on a drill because it's just going to save me a little time in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and I'll get back to you after that. And uh, same thing that you're doing here do the cover as well. So, um, I'm currently cleaning gasket off of bolts, and that's because they use silicone. This is another reason I'm very much against silicone. Uh, if you can get a light in these holes, or get a, can you get a shot of that? And see that, if, if you can see it, there's crud in there. And that's all silicone. And what that's going to do is that gonna, that's going to change the torque rating. So whenever you torque it down, that uh, is not, it's not right because there's a uh, RTV in there it's preventing you from getting the proper torque amount. So now what I have to do is I'm going to spray WD-40 run this bolt in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out like 40 times and I may just go get actually a donor bolt uh, one with the same threads because this one is actually going to be used in the cover so I'd rather not really mess any of them up but I'm going to have to take all these and get all this gasket material off of them parts of them and all that gas so this is going to be quite a dwelling process and uh, there's some of the stuff that's really tiresome like getting like getting these gasket surfaces clean and all that and right now don't worry about getting it super clean I'm just doing a overall before I clean the actual thing but um yeah because as you can see there's still gasket material on there stuff here at the top which they did a decent job with the RTV this isn't gunked up or nothing I mean it wasn't like squeezed out hanging out of the bottom which I've seen some of them do and that type of thing, but I mean overall this one this one's pretty decent. Whoever did this. This is the first thing on this truck that I've actually seen somebody do a decent job with. I know that's gonna sound shocking, but 
it's, it's the truth. So I'm going to go through this thing in neutral, uh, draw it back. And actually, I'm not. Um, let's take a look right here for a second. So do you see this little bolt? Right here, this little bolt. So that bolt right there is a very expensive mistake. So um, something that you want to do, a corner and ratchet, get on there, and see if you can break it with a corner and ratchet. Do not, by any means, use an impact on this bolt. That is the worst thing you can do for it. If you break this bolt and break those threads under there, you've got to go buy a special tool and drill it out because it holds in this pin. Okay? So I'm going to take that bolt out while it's, you know, not in neutral, and I can actually get a little bit of leverage to it. Um, which is awesome. I'm, I'm actually, it's actually worked out really good. <laughs> just strange because I was just complaining about it, but it actually worked out really well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do that, and I'll get back to you whenever I'm breaking this bolt. Hopefully not actually breaking it because that's gonna ruin my day. That is listening, right? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Feels like it's unthreading. It doesn't feel like anything's breaking. I think we're good. Yes! <laughs> oh. Well, um, I think, I think it, uh, so use a wrench. <laughs> yeah, maybe up until that point. Yeah. But yeah, I used the rubber hammer, and I just, I just lightly tapped it, guys. I didn't, I just, you know, kind of lightly tapped it with my very professional hammer. Is it bad that I'm kind of embarrassed by this hammer? <laughs> Why are you embarrassed about that hammer? It's a pipe shoved in a piece of rubber with a nail driven through it. <laughs> it's, it's not exactly professional. It, does it work? It actually does work really well. <laughs> and there's nothing to be embarrassed about. No, I'm going to go grab a wrench. I'd love to continue the video, but I dropped my wrench in the bucket. It's over there. Just, it's in that rag. <laughs> anyway. So I've turned to the drive shaft to where I can see these two spider gears and this pin. So whenever you take this bolt out, this pin comes out and you may have to give it a little, you know, up from the top. This is something you need to keep up with. So I'll put it on right now to try uh, this pin. Very careful with spider gears. Very careful of them. Okay, now we're gonna shove these axles in, and you can see. Can you see it in there? I don't want to get in here close. I can see it. There's an, uh, there's a C clip right there, and uh, I'm gonna go grab a light and a magnet so that I can really show you what I'm talking about. Because a lot of people, whenever I say C clip, they're like what? So I want you guys to understand exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna grab my Milwaukee light. I'm gonna hang it. On my fucking forehead, I guess. So. Okay. Go ahead. Very careful with these gears. Shove the axle forward. Okay. Do you see that C clip now? Take your magnet. Yeah, I can't hold a light. I haven't done this a lot, so. Okay. That's the C-clip. Okay. So you can go ahead and set that over here. And now, this axle can actually pull out. So come around to the side and we'll pull the axle out. Alright, so now, we can pull this axle out. And, as you can see, it's coming out. Are we good? Yeah, he's on. Ew. Let's 
tube's kind of gross. Okay. So that is one axle removed from a truck. Now, this is your seal, and there's your bearing in there. And that bearing is actually okay. So. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and replace them though because I already bought them so yeah all right so uh, what, what am I, what, how do I want to say this so earlier in the video I said there was a way to do this without a slide hammer and I lied okay uh, the guy actually I didn't lie well I did lie to you but the guy at um, the park store lied to me and he said oh you don't need a slide hammer to use this tool like okay this was his something it's not okay I had to go back to AutoZone at 7 o'clock at night to go get a new one. It's fine. It's fine. Everybody makes mistakes. Anyway, so the way this tool works is you saw this piece earlier. Okay, you saw this piece earlier. So this piece, like I said, slides in there and hooks on the back of it. And then this slide hammer, you get in there, it threads into the end of that. Remember how I said I didn't know what threaded into there? Slide hammer does. So then you're going to get it and just pull it back. And I'll show you real quick. We're going to do it right now. So. Okay, so take your ramp and tighten down this nut until it's pretty snug. And then I'm just gonna reach back and out with the bearing. Huh. Less quicker than the last one. So, and there's now be oh, old getting everywhere. I did that in two hits. <laughs> yeah, that was kinda wild. The last one took what <laughs> repeated hits from that to get out? And then you <laughs> what stripped out the uh, bearing? Oh well the bearing cage broke. That one was yeah. in there really tight. I said ding ding. Okay, so yeah, that's how you do it. Uh I honestly did not think that was going to go that well. So, uh, oh yeah, I tightened this thing down good. That's probably why. <clears throat> I'm going to go get two wrenches and take this off. But yeah, also, let's put a rag there. Huh. Okay, so in here I have my new bearing. It's not in here. Okay. So right now I just kind of have it, you just kind of set it in there. And then we've already talked about the driver tool and how it works. Uh, tighten down this nut uh, with, the, with a wrench. I love rounded fasteners. Anywho, then you're gonna take a hammer and the bearing driver and just gonna tap the new bearing in there. Until you hear a until you hear a sound change. Did you hear that? Did you, if you notice the sound change and the bearing spins good and free. Uh, I'm actually gonna it's not spinning quite as free as I'd like it to. So I am going to actually go in there and get some geared up and spray in here and move this bearing around. Uh, those bearings actually may have been a little loose because bearings do that. Now we're going to uh, I'm gonna install the seal next, but first I'm going to go ahead and go get some geared up and move that up before I even do this. So I'm going to do that off camera. I'm just going to put geared up in these and move it around. That's all I'm going to do. So it's, it's pretty simple stuff. Okay, so I'm not sure it's getting dark, so I'm not sure how well you can see the seal. But I've coated it with a with a thin layer of silicone all the way around. Now I'm just gonna kind of then and the driver will actually center it. Um, so what did they do with that hammer? The hammer's right there. I'm just, I'm just gonna, and then uh, make sure that it's going in straight and it looks to not be. Well, you have a minute, so. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, that looks like it's too far. Fucking bearing stuff's going. I didn't put it in backwards. No. No, because that outer lip has to face this way. Uh huh. Yeah. Say something before your time runs out. Just cut it. Okay, so something that I apparently forgot to put in the video, and I do apologize for this, is um, I forgot to talk about the uh, the pin, and I forgot to talk about the pin and the bolt. 
so what happened in that video is it got really late and I completely forgot and I was editing it today and I realized that none of that was in there so you're basically going to clean everything up slide your axles back in uh, very careful whenever sliding them in not, not, not to damage or nick any of the seals slide them back in put your C-clips in uh, slide your pin back in and then you're going to put that bolt in and what holds that bolt in is nothing more than Loctite so use some blue Loctite on there uh, snug that bolt down with a wrench and you're done so I've seen a lot of other people talk about different ways of doing it and I found that to be the best way so yeah guys uh, this is going to be mid video I hope that this makes sense uh, there are other videos explaining this more in detail and I do and I do apologize I ended up getting late and we ended up not getting to it so uh, yeah now we can get back to your regular scheduled program okay now the diff is good uh, as you can see it's actually starting to rust it's starting to flash rust so I'm probably gonna uh, probably should have cleaned up the cover before I did this but I might go ahead and squirt some gear dope and rub it around in here with a pair of gloves on so that all this is nice and lubricated so it doesn't flash rust anymore um, but in the meantime, take this cover over there and do the same thing to it. And scrape all this big old goopy goop off. So I've cleaned it with brake clean, I just kind of sprayed it out in here, and then I've taken gear roll and I've just kind of ran it along this entire thing. I don't know if this is required, but uh, makes me feel a little better, and uh, that'll get in there good. Kind of just give everything a little bit of a pre-soak before it runs again. I'm not a big fan of things running dry. Transmissions, engines, you name it. I always like them to give, be given their best chance. Uh, I'm not very familiar with differentials. Uh, I haven't done a lot of them. So, I'm just giving it the best chance that it's got to, you know, be okay. You know what I mean? So, uh, this gasket service I'll probably clean again. But first, I'm going to go clean out this cover. And I'm going to sand it down and get it nice clean. I've already kind of... I've already sanded down where it meets this and it's looking pretty good. I'll probably do a thin layer of RTV on the just the back side of this before I put my gasket on just to hold it in place while I and I'm talking about finger thin layer. I'll get big dirt here with me whenever I do it, but um, and I may not do it, I may just do a couple dots of it. But one thing that I still have to do is I need to Actually, clean out these holes. And brake clean is a wonderful breaker of RTV. So, what am I doing my impact? So, I'm just going to use the old bolt. And as you can see, you probably saw it. Uh, You can see it actually shot it up all over that. So then you're just going to do this to all the holes.
All right. I believe we are good now with this cover. This is what a nice clean cover should look like. I'm probably going to go get some compressed air to try to blow out some of the rest of this gunk. Yeah. Thing that I'm really digging is this new top on these paint cans. I don't know if anybody's noticed this, but uh, this makes it like I remember for you. So it used to be like a like a hard top. That you had to, and it was hard and hurt your fingers. I like these new ones. They make it really easy to paint. I don't know. That's just something I felt like. Oh, I just I just noticed it a couple days ago. And I know I'm not wearing shoes. Now, I'm going to let that dry for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to wash my hands and get a clean pair of gloves on and go get me a glass of tea. Okay, so I've put four dabs of RTV on this to hold the gasket in place. Now I'm going to glue it in place. And look, that RTV holds it on there perfectly. So now we don't have to worry about tearing it whenever we're going to install our cover. Now we can. And I failed to clean up my bolts, so I'm going to kind of just do that as I install them. Cause I just like stopped recording because I couldn't see anything. <laughs> so whenever you're going to torque things in an X pattern, like so. I think I've already torqued this one. I did not. So, since I started with that bolt, get my Sarpy and mark it so that I know that I've torqued that one. Because whenever you go to the next pattern, it's pretty easy to get confused. Uh, if you used RTV, you're going to want to let this sit up overnight. I did not. I used a gasket. So, 
Um, something else is there's no squashing, uh, which you get with RTV. As you can see, this RTV right here, uh, it's still there. I mean, it, it, I used a very finger thin layer, so you never even, you can't even really tell that I put any on it. Um, it was not, it, it was just to stick the gasket on so that I could bolt everything up without having to worry about it falling off. And you can do that with certain things. I used what's called high temp RTV, which is good for this application. Uh, that's actually made for differentials. So if you're going to use just RTV, make sure you get the right RTV. They make different ones and stuff like that. I also did axle seals and I used RTV on those. Uh, I also did drum brakes. In this video because whenever I took apart the axle uh, the drum brakes were bad that's gonna be a separate video so this one you may see you may be seeing fresh looking drums on it that's that's a separate video um, anyways regardless now I've got us a nice painted black differential cover and a gasket sealed we're gonna take off the back the fill bolt I'll grab my transfer pump and I'm gonna test out that thing I paid uh, 10 bucks actually I think the guy gave it to me he found it in his trash can. He was like, hey, you want this? I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. So I got it for free. So if it don't work, I'm not going to be upset. But it says a Harbor Freight transfer pump. So we're going to see how well it works of getting fluid out of uh, out of these bottles into that. And also another thing is, um, a cool thing about these is, is uh, you have to cut these, right? So rather than cutting these, which of course you can just... Just pop that on that but don't cut all these tabs because you're gonna have to pull this off anyway because of the fact of there's a little seal in there so keep one of the keep this good keep all of these caps so that you have these laying around and uh, just thread these back on it's a lot better if a seal than that is and it keeps it fresh for a little bit longer this I haven't had very long maybe three months this one uh, I used it when I read the differential on my Explorer which I actually did at school which is what made this one a little bit easier because um, I'd already kind of messed with it a little bit. Got it. Woohoo! As you can see, that is a good looking plug. No, there's not a lot of metal on it. This, that's just kind of normal wear. I mean, it is metal. You can barely feel it. But that, that there's just about normal. So I'm going to clean this off with some brake clean. i got a fresh magnet. And uh, we'll be good to go. <laughs> okay, so I know this was a long video. But I definitely hope it helped everybody to understand how to do differentials in their entirety. I know I have that one little spot in the middle, which I forgot to, you know, elaborate on in the actual video itself. But, yeah, so... I hope this video helped. I hope that now you understand how to do differentials in their entirety. Uh, I know this video is like 30 minutes long. So, um, yeah. Like I said, guys, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you stayed to the end, awesome. If you made it this far, go ahead and click like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.